Guess who back? Back again. Scotty's back. Tell you friends. <laughs> oh my God. I'm getting too old for this. And no, I'm not M&M's or whatever, Poof Duty and Poof Daddy and all that good stuff. I am Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and Team G503 here on the YouTube. Good to see everybody. It's been about a month since we made a video. Uh, had some really cool things happen in the past month. We're going to start selling parts and we're going to start doing this and we're going to start doing that. And I've got some nice stocked parts here in Charleston, South Carolina, which is taking a lot of work to do. I'm filing them all on a computer, taking pictures. I've listed some stuff on Facebook, some stuff on eBay. Going to start out small and see if we can't build a nice East Coast facility for our fantastic company. That includes Joe's Motor Pool, um, which leads me to this. Uh, I'm in the Team G503 channel here, I'm going to start showing you maybe little those little bleeps, those little videos or shorts, they call them, on some of the awesome parts that Joe's Motor Pool has. You might be surprised what's going to be coming out in the next few months, so you might be interested in that. Anyways, let's get back into the how-to and technical videos. It's been a long time since I've done one of those. Thank you for being so patient and waiting, and thank you for all the new subscribers. It's really The channel's really growing exponentially in the past couple months, which is, which is awesome. Love every second of that. This video, I'm going to be installing the throttle and choke cables on the WO carburetor. It's kind of a long one, but it gets really kind of technical about it. I will be showing you more about the carburetor in the near future, and we will be finishing up the series on the electric wiring harness. There's only a couple more to do on that. And if you've been staying with the series here and watching that, you probably wonder, he, he, he almost got right to the end, and he kind of stopped. Well, I'm telling you, there's been some big things going on in the G503 world. I'm back making the videos, going to try to keep up on them as best as I can, doing both things at the same time. All right, let's dive into those throttle and choke cables. We're going to be installing the throttle and choke cables here. These are manufactured with high quality standards from Joe's Motor Pool, and they are available from Joe's Motor Pool as well as Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts here in the States. These are the ones with the knobs that are two-piece metal stamped. These are also available with resin or plastic heads. I'm going to take a close look here at the end, and what I really want to show you here, this tight close shot video here, is the brass end there with the threads. Notice that flat spot on there. That's going to be important when we install these onto the dash. As the cutout holes or the drilled holes here, you see the flat bottom spot there, and that's going to orient how your throttle and choke cables go. We're going to be placing the cable through that opening first and then through the dash and then out the cowl here. I'm going to show you in the front where the grommet hole is. It's the third one over from the driver's side that we're going to be putting both of those cables through. I'm going to show you a little closer up here what I'm talking about. We're going to do the throttle cable first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the nut and the lock washer. They just slide right off here and then you can keep them in your hand because when we put these back on, the lock washer is going to go on the inside of the dash and then the nut's going to go on the back so it tightens the lock washer and bites onto the back side. So all we're going to do is slip to just the front end of this cable inside there and then we'll reach underneath the dash. Again, lock washer goes on first and then the nut itself. Now you're going to have to leave those hanging there just for a second because we're going to have to crawl underneath the dash here and then feed that cable through the grommet hole that's in the firewall. I'll show you here in a second. So now we've got the hole there. You see I've already kind of poked that out there with that cardboard insert that we've got underneath there. You might want to go ahead and just push something through that so you won't have to use the actual cable itself to force it through. It's a little difficult to get through that fire pad there. On the outside of the cowl here, you'll see that grommet, and both of those are going to come through there, both the throttle and the choke cable. Again, third grommet over from the outside edge there of the driver's side. Once you've got that length pulled all the way through, you can go back underneath and tighten that nut and lock washer up against the dashboard there. Notice here that this is a lot longer than what we need. We're going to get to that soon here in the video as well. If you notice also, uh, this stage here where I first installed these uh, cables, I did not even have the fenders on the Jeep yet, So, but I just was excited to put them on there. So all I'm doing now is I'm going to tape them up there. One's going to say throttle, one's going to say choke, and I'm going to keep them out of the way, but they are going to be installed. I wanted to do that for a couple reasons, mainly because I was working on the wiring underneath the dash at the time, and I just wanted to make sure those were in place and not get in the way of the wiring. Here we jumpstart a whole lot forward more, and we've got the videos available here where we installed the carburetor onto the manifold, and I want to show you here now how we're going to install these cables. We've got a whole lot more cable that we actually need here for the Jeep, and that's because these uh, cables are designed to also go on other vehicles and trucks as well, so we're going to have to trim them. 
I'm going to be installing the choke cable first, and that's going to go into that top bracket, or the one I'll say is on top going vertical up there. You'll be able to get a closer look at it here in a second. One of the things also I'll say while I've got this camera here zoomed on the carburetor is, is that I lubed, took apart, just simply slid the cable out of the sheathing there, and I put a little light oil on it. There's other uh, lubricants you can use. I've heard of guys using graphite and maybe even a light grease, but you do probably want to lube those up, and I apologize for not filming that portion of what I did. Let's go ahead and cut this cable to length now. I'm going to be installing the choke cable again first, and I'm just going to hold my hand and bring that to the, the bracket there, and I'm going to leave myself about a quarter of an inch longer than the face side of that bracket. I like to leave just a little bit outside. Now what I'm going to do next might make you cringe a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and take my little snips here, and I'm going to open up the coiling on the outer sleeve. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing it like this, you can take the inner part out and then you can go ahead and cut where you've made your mark. I'm pretty confident these are nice sharp snips and I'll be able to just grab a hold of that little piece of that cable out there and snip that off without damaging that inner cable. I've also taken the inner out and then cut it and actually squished the outer and that was a big mess too. So I like to do it like this and just be really careful about it. Okay, all I do is make one little snip and then I can take the outer sleeve, the remnants of that off, and I'm gonna cut the inner part of the cable about seven, eight inches from where I made the, the end cut. You're not gonna need that much, but it's better to have more than not have enough. Now we're going to install the cable into that little bracket there. What you can do is you can slide a little bit back into the collar of the Jeep. You don't want to bend this or kink this in any way, so it's easier just to slide it backwards, and then we're going to feed it through that top bracket there as we've talked about. If you notice, I removed my rag from the top of the carburetor there just to verify that indeed I am installing the choke cable. You don't want to get those flip-flop backwards and then have to change after you've discovered you've done it wrong. Now my cable doesn't quite fit into that clamp, so we're going to have to loosen that up with a little screwdriver. It's not a big deal. I'm going to loosen the nut here on the nut and bolt that squeezes those two clamps together a little bit before I do that. And again, we'll just take a little flathead screwdriver and we'll insert it inside there and just tweak it just a little bit and that should open it enough for you to get that sleeve of that cable through there. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit at a time and just get that through there. Now it's pretty easy for me to get in there. I'm going to go past about a quarter of an inch, and that is just so it's not inside that clamp, and I don't want to pinch anything and cause the travel of the inner piece of the cable there not to operate smoothly. We're going to go ahead and cut the other one the same way we did the first one for the lower bracket, and all you need to do is match that up. Again, give yourself about a quarter inch. I'm looking down here at the camera to kind of give you an idea about that. Now, on this one, you're going to want to leave enough of the cable to travel from there and around the linkage and down to the front of the carburetor. So on that cable, you're going to need about eight to nine inches would be a good length to work with from the start. Before we worry about that cable, which would be the throttle cable, let's go ahead here and put our choke cable through the stop there and we'll get that all hooked up so that's not in our way. And we're also going to need to have that hooked up so we can make sure that nothing that we're doing here is going to inf interfere with the operation of the carburetor. The position of the set screw on that brass block is upwards towards you, and I'm just feeding the inner cable through the two slots or holes that are inside there, as you can see. And on the inside of the Jeep, I'm pushing the knob to engage it fully forward up against the dash. You have to make sure that that's fully set there before we go ahead and tighten down that set screw. The next step we're going to do is I'm going to remove my rag here again from the top of the carburetor, and I'm going to open it up and just verify that the choke plate is not being impeded in any sort of way, and that I've got no resistance there because that's the full open position. When you pull the knob of the inside, it's going to close the choke plate, and that's what's going to enable you to choke your carburetor during initial or cold starts. Okay, before we tighten that set screw, I want to show you something here on the inside of the carburetor. You have to make sure that your choke knob is pushed completely flush up against that brass stop there on your firewall. And then we're going to come back inside here and take a look at this choke plate. If you notice it fully relaxed, it's not fully open, or so we've got a little bit of movement. What we want to do is we want to set that, pull it forward until that little brass stop, if you look down there, you're going to see a little brass pin is touching the inside of the wall there of the carburetor. Then we can go ahead and tighten that set screw. So I'm just gonna hold that cable out with one hand and then I'm gonna slide that little stop forward there. Again, they haven't tightened anything up there on the set screw. And then I'm gonna use a flat-headed screwdriver to tighten that set screw down. Now it's gonna take a few turns and you really wanna get this snug. You don't wanna over tighten and strip it, but you wanna tighten it down to the point where you start feeling a lot of resistance and you'll also notice that that cable is going to start bending up in your hand. And I'll show you that here in a second. See how that kind of wings up now? So now we're gonna trim that down a little bit. I'm gonna cut and leave about an inch 
uh, I left on the end of that cable there. I'll just give it a hold here, take my trusty snips and cut that off. And then I'm going to bend up just a little bit more on that cable, just so, and I'll do it by hand, just so it's going to stay put. You don't want to twist it all the way back, but you do want to kind of bend it up, maybe like at a 20, 25 degree angle. Take you to the top side here with the camera. We can take a closer look there how we've got it all done. So I've got that bent up just a little bit, like I say. And then look down in there and you'll see that that little pin or that stop is engaged against the side of the inner part of the carburetor. I'll go inside here in a second and take a whole good pull the knob and I'll show you how that operates the choke plate. Uh, when you initially start the Jeep in a cold start in, in such applications, you'll want to use that choke. So as we pull on the inside there, you see it closes all the way and we can open it back and forth and it moves freely. So that part's done. Done. That was the easy one. Now let's go on to installing the throttle cable. I've got my little brass throttle cable stop here and it's got a screw that sets on the inside here. It's threaded on the inside to pinch up against our throttle cable. You see the hole there. I'm going to set that aside and make sure you don't lose it because that's an important piece. We'll go ahead now and we'll feed the throttle cable through the outside or the bracket that's facing, the loops facing down. We're going to do it the same way that we did the choke cable. Our trusty little stubby flathead screwdriver here, just open that up again. And these little brackets, they come you know, tightened down from the factory. If you have to tweak them a little bit, it's not a big deal. Uh, I've heard some people getting nervous about doing that. Just make sure you don't force anything or bend anything. And if you do, you, you can bend it back. But a little screwdriver is a lifesaver when it comes to putting these cables in, as you can tell from this video. So I'm going to slip this outer sleeve in the same way I did the choke. And I'm going to run that past that bracket again, probably about a quarter of an inch. Again, I like to leave just a little bit there hanging off the inside. The cable itself is a little bit more difficult to route than it is on the choke. You have to kind of feed it through the side here of your linkage. And I'm going to show you a real close-up detailed video here in the end as I do this. I've got the camera set up so you, my hands are going to be right in the way that I'm doing this. But you're going to want to bring that in through the side of that linkage on the side of the carburetor in kind of like a downward arcing motion. Again, I'm going to show you this really close detail after I do this. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to push from the inside again with our knob. We're going to make sure nothing's bound up there before we tighten these all down. And I'm going to slide this. Here, here it comes. This is a tough one right here. As I'm pushing the knob forward towards the inside, I'm going to use my hand and guide it right between that linkage that's been on the side there of the carburetor. You don't want that binding up against any of the springs or any of the uh, assembly there that actuates the floor pedal. And then we're going to slide it through this pin that's on the bottom side of this arm here. And that's just going to slip right through there. And once you get to that part now, you're pretty much home free. We're going to pull out any slack that we need to on the cable and make sure once again that that knob that's on the inside of the dash is fully engaged up against the dash of your Jeep. And we can go ahead and we're going to install that cable stop that we set aside because we didn't want to lose it. <laughs> Ask me how I know on that one as well. Just make sure that everything operates freely of that cable and you can move that throttle position up and down without any sort of binding before you go ahead and set the uh, stop there on that wire. You'll want to make any adjustments that you need to at this point before you do that. So we've got our stop and it's got the holes in it and I've already loosened the screw there and we're just going to simply slide that on to the cable there until it touches, just touches that pin that we went through on the bottom side of that linkage. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start to tighten this set screw, but I like to take that and turn that stop so it's kind of vertical, so it would be easier for me to get at if I ever needed to loosen it up. But before I do that, just go ahead and you know start it so it gets snug, and then we can hold it there vertically and tighten that down finally. We're going to do it the same way as we did the one on the top. You're going to tighten that screw down to the point where it starts to bend up on your wire, and that's how you're going to know that you've got Got that snug enough. You don't want to over tighten it. It is brass and it can strip if you over tighten it. So just snug it down until you start feeling that wire start to bend up towards you and then give it maybe another half to three quarters of a turn after that and make sure that it cannot slide up or down or move in or out. This one's a little bit more difficult to get at than the one there on the choke as you got to hold that in place as you tighten it there on the wire. It kind of wants to turn on you a little bit. You see there how my wire is kind of starting to bend up already. I'm going to give it one more little tweak and I'm going to tweak that one a little bit more than I did the choke, maybe 30, 40 degrees, just to give it a little bend before I go ahead here now with my snips and snip that end off. I'm going to cut it at about three quarters of an inch to an inch just off the stop there. Just a simple cut. That shouldn't go anywhere. Again, we've got a little bend in it and everything's all nice and snug down tight. Just snip that end right off there and dispose of the extra piece. 
The last thing that we need to do is go ahead and make sure that all our cables are not in interfering with any sort of function of any part of the carburetor there. Usually if you're going to have a problem, it's going to be that cable rubbing right there. So when you tighten these brackets down or these clamps down, you can kind of make little adjustments as you go and make sure that that cable does not drag against any part of the carburetor. I'm just going to kind of manipulate these a little bit with my hands as I tighten this down because there is a little bit of play in the clamps there. I'm just using my fingers to hold the nut and then I'm screwing in the screw with the screw as I get it as close as I possibly can. After that, you can take a 3 8 inch wrench and then you can hold the screw with that and you can tighten everything down one last time to get those clamps nice and snug. You want them nice and tight, but you don't want to over tighten them once again and either strip the screw and or crush some sort of that outside housing. I have seen it happen where they've been over tightened with a ratchet of some kind and it did actually crush the brackets and then pinch the wires. I know it's hard to believe, but it's the truth. So we'll get them nice and tight and make sure that we can move them in and out without the outer sleeve there sliding back or forth when we pull the knob from the inside of the dash panel. Okay, so we've got everything hooked up. Let's take a nice close look at it. If you see there, now I'm, it looks from the video there in the picture, I was like, but I am missing that linkage by about a sixteenth of an inch, and that's really all it takes. It's you don't want the cable impeding the movement of any piece of that carburetor mechanism. I know it looks really close to the video. The other thing I need to show you, and pay attention to this before you put this together, you see how I've got that clamp on a downward angle so it kind of makes an arc. That's on the throttle cable, so keep that in mind when you're setting that up and you're manipulating those so they don't interfere with the operation of your carburetor. Last thing I'll do now is we've already done the choke one, so I'm going to leave that rag in there. I don't want any debris falling in my carburetor here while I'm working on the Jeep. And then I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to test my throttle cable and test it you know, multiple times. Pull it back and forth, you know, halfway adjust, a quarter way adjust, up and down. Just make sure nothing's dragging and it doesn't stick open or close because that could also cause you a big problem if something like that happened too. Okay, everything seems to be secure and everything seems to be working fine, so we're going to move on to the next step in the restoration of the 1943 Willis MB. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, my friends. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking that little subscribe button down there and hit that bell also so you will get notifications of when we release the new videos. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to start trying to pump them back out again. It takes a lot of time to make a video. I know this is, you know, I'll just go out there and... Whoa. Anyways... Stay tuned also, check out some of the shorts we'll be putting out on some of the Joe's Motor Pool parts and the Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep parts that he's got out there as well too. Going to be something we're going to roll into the videos. Now if you notice, I've been wearing a lot of this lately. I'm not letting any cats out the bag because no deal is done until the deal is done until the deal is done. However, there may be a GPW in the future. Who knows? No, I'm not, I'm not making fun of Ford. All right, guys. Until next time, keep it safe and happy Jeeping. We'll see you next time.